Welcome to the Bio Balance Healthcast, episode number 523. Peptides are needed now to cure the problems that occur with aging. Bio Balance Health features conversations about anti aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moppin, Medical Director of Bio Balance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moppin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at Biobalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. Our concern this week is to talk about a new focal point in medicine. Established medicines that have been around for the better part of the 20th century have sort of run their usefulness, the the gamut of what they can effectively do. And more and more viruses, for instance, are resistant to medicines. And the the prescriptions that doctors give you and use, they they, often have had serendipitous discoveries, like if we use this for this, but it also treats this, Mm -hmm. and it's called off-label treatment. Mm -hmm. Uh, The FDA approves it for what it was originally tested for. Uh, A drug manufacturer has to make a proposal to the FDA and says, we think we have a drug for this. Here's all our test data. This is what it does, and we want to use it to treat this. And the FDA says, okay. And then doctors discover serendipitously, well, if it treats this, it also maybe helps people diet that are trying to diet, or it helps people not have headaches or other Mm -hmm. things, beneficial uses for it. And they do that. In the course of trying to find new treatments and new methodologies, they have discovered that there are protein chains in the body that are called peptides. And there are thousands of peptides that the body uses. Most of them don't even have names. They just have numbers. They're code numbers that that are in labs and in computers. And doctors say, well, let's work on X9102A. And then they find out, hey, this one works on this particular issue or this particular behavior, this particular illness. And then they give it a name and they say, let's put this on the market. And doctors around the world are discovering these peptides. I think there may be 150 that have been named and identified Mm -hmm. and probably a dozen that are coming into common usage in doctor's offices throughout America. They are not naturally occurring substances that that, uh, you can get. They have to be made in the lab in a compounding. They're they're natural natural ingredients. in your body, but when you run out of them, then we can make them in the pharmacy. And and it has to be a compounding pharmacy that makes it because the major drug companies don't mass produce these. Partly because they they have to stay refrigerated until they can be delivered. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there are other reasons they don't they don't do it. It hasn't been finished with testing. They don't think it will make enough money. They, you know, it's not when drugs come on the market. It's it's not always about does this drug fix a problem we have not gotten a solution for. It's also always about how many people need this, how much money will we make, right. and if if they're not going to make enough money, they're not going to go to the trouble of trying to get FDA approval. So many because it's an extremely expensive process. process to go through FDA approval. So so now at this point, there are a few peptides that are that are um, a medication like Victoza is a peptide. I was just going to ask and you Victoza that. Victoza is. Um, is a diabetic medication or a weight loss medication, both. And it is actually given as a subcutaneous shot, tiny little needle in your belly. And Victoza doesn't have the side effects that metformin, which is the most common medicine right. and, and is a t- an oral tablet that mm-hmm. you take, produces the negative side effects in the body. Right. So but it, it also has the additional um, benefit that it really makes you lose weight pretty fast, you know, and it keeps your weight down. And you don't have to take a pill all the time. You just take a little shot in the morning. So especially for those people that are pre-diabetic and they're just starting to get where their numbers are of concern to their doctors and they're saying, you got to lose some weight. you got to watch this. You're going to cross this line. And once you cross this line, you're not going to come back. And instead of something like metformin, which mm-hmm. they would give previously, mm-hmm. they are now using Victoza, and that helps people lose weight so they don't, they don't get have as di- close to the they line. they don't have diabetes anymore. Right. Or, you know, the, so... So it's it's a very so that's one peptide that's an example of a peptide, mm-hmm. 
but there are, and, and that's a natural, it's, it's actually a copy of a naturally occurring piece of protein in your body. So we don't, we don't just have hormones and we just don't just have neurotransmitters or minerals or enzymes or, um, or vitamins that actually make our body go. I mean, mm -hmm. they're, they're all integral in the workings of our body and we don't even, we don't feel it, we don't know it, but they're in there working for you. You only notice it when they disappear. Well, and, there, and that's when we need to give them back. There, as I understand it, and I'll say this and you help me get it correct, <laughs> they're like chemical messengers that trigger things in your body to happen. Mm -hmm. And as you age, the it's like your the nub on your pen wears down, mm -hmm. and it's no longer a sharp point for writing, mm -hmm. and you have to sharpen the pen. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't sharpen those hormones in your body, but this peptide will stimulate it just like a sharpened pen. Right. So it triggers your body. For instance, growth hormone, your own natural growth hormone production, which diminishes as you age. It's part of the aging process. You're not growing. You're not, you're not healing and you're not making muscle. Yeah. And, and so if you need that to be stimulated mm -hmm. so that you can improve your immune system, that you can heal from injuries mm -hmm. and you can build muscle. And you can think. Then peptides. <laughs> thanks, I forgot that one. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I took care of that. Yeah. <laughs> So, so, um, so peptides um, are one of the communicators, and the one that they haven't really paid attention to. Mm -hmm. We we know that most peptides or some peptides are triggered or stimulated by hormones. So we always do hormone treatment first. So we replace the hormones that are necessary: thyroid, horm uh, estrogen, testosterone, and then we see are any of those symptoms still there. Okay, it's hard to test for. A peptide because it's it's a, a communicator within a tissue so it's like one part of your often one part of your muscle is communicating with another part of your muscle it, it doesn't like go out into the bloodstream and and uh, we can't test it from your blood so it's it's within a tissue often um, some of them are stimulators within the pituitary like to make more growth hormone so in any case we we lay the groundwork by Fixing everything else, lifestyle, diet, exercise, vitamins. And then if something's still left, this is our next step. Instead of a, a, a drug to treat a symptom, we are trying to treat the problem, give you back what you're missing. And a drug that may have negative side effects. Right. And are, and are we saying that peptides don't have negative side effects? Essentially, they don't. I mean, if you do them, if you actually use them at the proper dose that is given to you by your doctor and you use them as they are prescribed and you have the problem the appropriate problem that they're for aimed them, to, the, to the right target right then yeah. then peptides really don't have side effects now um, if you were if you didn't need them and you take a peptide it does nothing you don't feel anything your symptom symptoms aren't there so you don't have anything to show that it goes away right. um, for growth hormone patients patients who growth hormone is really a youthful hormone it's a reflection of how much muscle you have and how much and, and how little fat you have. It's, it's a reflection of how well you'll heal from a surgery. And it comes from your pituitary. I don't give growth hormone. I only stimulate growth hormone production. Right. Right. Because giving growth hormone is a human product. You get all the problems from a hum, the human that donated it. Okay. And even though it's purified, it's... It can cause you to have an autoimmune disease that kills your um, pancreas. So get it, it can cause type 1 so, diabetes. So that's one of the reasons that the federal government severely restricts your ability to give growth hormone. I that's mean, a doctor that reasons. gives growth hormones is going to hear from the FDA. They're going to come in and say, mm -hmm. why are you doing this? What's your legitimacy? What's your training? What, what What's the focal point of your treatment? And there are legitimate reasons yeah. like traumatic brain injuries to do that. Or short stature in children. I mean, but they're... There are some people who don't have a pituitary that need to have growth hormone. That's, right. Right. that's just, they have to actually take the hormone itself. They can't make it. So after surgery on their brain or after a head injury, that may be the case. But that However, needs to come from a donor human. Yeah. And that brings issues in the donor human's body into your body, which you may not have uh, initially. And you, it, it may have, um, it, it seems to have uh, issues with, your pancreas. So oftentimes antibodies are formed to your pancreas 
because it's reacting to the growth hormone. So instead, we use a peptide. Currently, the one that I use is CJC12, is it 95? Anyway, it has a number. Ipamorelin. <laughs> and Ipamorelin. And that's, yeah. it's a combination of two stimulators. And the advantage of taking a stimulator is that I can't overdose you because your body t has a feedback system. I can stimulate your own production, and then if you get too much, your body says stop. And so you don't make any more. So that's why we give it we give it at night when you usually make your growth hormone before bed. We give it on an empty stomach because it can be confused with food in your body, and it, that means it could be broken down. And we give it so that at night you're making more, mm -hmm. and it works through the next day. So it is. it's a little hard to test for this after you've given it, we have to go by symptoms. Are you thinking better? Do you have better muscle mass? Have you lost fat? Do you feel like getting up in the morning? Do you feel like getting getting up and going? A lot of these things cross over with testosterone, but my patients are, the patients that need this are usually patients that have been on testosterone for a long time. It always fixed this. So they, always, they tend to be stopped. older males? Older males and females. And females. But it, it, it's all of a sudden, they get these symptoms back, but it's not about the testosterone dose. It's just that it's not effective in stimulating the growth hormone anymore. Mm -hmm. So then we have to add growth hormone as an additive to the testosterone because testosterone is still doing a lot of things for that patient. It's just not stimulating growth hormone. So we have to add something. Okay. It's not usually where I, it's never where I start. So um, when we are, when we're looking at, um, well, but before you okay. segue from that, talking about growth hormone, in the notes that you, you prepared mm -hmm. for this conversation, mm -hmm. you said growth hormone uh, provides benefits such as fat loss, muscle growth, energy, improved mental capacity, hair growth, skin turnover for beautiful skin. Your skin replaces itself, what, every seven days? Um, yeah, it comes to the surface every seven days. It yeah. exfoliates, but it, it speeds up the process. As you get older, it does it less. It slows down as well as improving many diseases that come with old age, like osteoporosis, diabetes, heart disease, and age-induced immune deficiency. So if you can stimulate your own growth hormone, and testosterone does that initially, but eventually the efficacy of that diminishes. It can't do more. And what we've now discovered is that this particular peptide can step up to the plate after testosterone has done its job and continue the process of stimulating your growth hormone so that these counterbalancing issues for aging health function are improved. And I'm not saying everyone has that. Yeah. I'm just saying many of my no, patients it's a tool for those that, years yeah. of testosterone, it's a tool for those who have it. And like I've had three head injuries mm -hmm. and testosterone never brought my growth hormone up, but I felt fine. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I didn't. Okay. And I had great levels. So I started the the combination CJC and Ipamorelin and I was back to normal again. I mean, it was fast. It was like a week and my brain came back and everything else came. I mean, my brain was never gone, but it was just a little slower than I'm used to. I was a little more tired than I usually was, but but it really just kind of like made me feel like I used to on just testosterone. Mm -hmm. It's an, It was an interesting kind of well, test. Well, also, we live in a very stressful time, and outside stressors change the way your body reacts to things. Mm -hmm. And so if they exhaust or deplete the benefit that you're getting from testosterone and you don't have the ability to reduce your stressors, then you need something extra to help, and mm -hmm. something like this would do it. Right. And this, it, we, te we kind of go through the symptoms to make sure we're on the right track. Right. If all you have is, oh, now I'm getting sick all the time and my immunizations don't work, like I got immunized for, for the flu and then I got the flu, you know, that happens as we get older because immunizations don't increase our, our white cell counts as much as they used to. And so we're not as immune. Sometimes testosterone will help that when we're a little younger. But as we get towards 70, that stops happening. So the, the uh, peptide called thymosin, um, thymosin alpha-1 mm -hmm. is the peptide that stimulates a, a gland that's right behind your breastbone and is very big when you're a baby and very small um, by the time you're in your 60s. So that is what makes your immune system work. And if it's shrinking, it's not working very well. Well, right. thymosin alpha-1 increases the size and the activity uh, of your thymus. And it puts out more T killer cells, T helper cells, all the cells that 
help you develop an immunity. Uh, it stimulates your monocytes to make IgG, which is, is an uh, antibody to, uh, to the um, Im immune, an antibody used in the immune system and the immune process after you've gotten an, uh, a vaccine. So this helps you not get so sick. You know, people, people in nursing homes have bladder infections all the time. I mean, that's not just because they don't urinate enough. I mean, it's because they their immune system isn't working, and then they get sick all the time. They have, I mean, they their so immune if you system eat doesn't animal work. thymus, does that transfer <laughs> to the called system? Sweet breads. I knew that actually. <laughs> we, we had a conversation during a conference <laughs> with an, a waitress who who informed us that sweet breads. We, th we thought they were... We thought they were something else. Uh, they, yeah, we were, thought they were something else. Yeah. So in the food world, the thymus is called sweetbreads. I, I, don't, I don't know. I haven't read any studies that say that that's true because mm. anytime you eat a protein, it's broken down. So a peptide that's in, a, in the thymus may not make it through the stomach without being broken down. Okay. So that's another reason. Uh, that brings me to the next thing is that in general, peptides can't be given orally because your body treats them as food and breaks them down, and, and then they don't get through and do anything. Right. You said it at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so there are mainly two delivery systems, a nasal mm -hmm. spray mm -hmm. or an injection. Right. Okay. And there's one, which I didn't really um, center on this time, but it's called BPC, body protective compound, that you can take orally to protect your stomach if you have ulcers or instead of taking a drug, and to protect you from reflux, you know, the the burning in your esophagus. And if you have a like a colon issue, the BPC orally protects the inside of the tube of the colon. So it gets through somehow, but okay. it's because your stomach makes it. Mm -hmm. So your stomach is used to not breaking it down. Oh, okay. So, um, so basically when your stomach stops making it, we get reflux and heartburn. So, this, so that's one of the peptides that you can take orally. Most of them have to go through your, your nasal um, passage or, or have to be injected with a subcutaneous needle, a tiny needle. Okay. So thymosin alpha-1 is mm -hmm. used for infections, cancer, autoimmune disease, infection prevention, and the treatment of immune-suppressed individuals. So that whole category of people that you were just talking mm -hmm. about. And as you age, you're more likely to fall into any or all of those categories. Mm -hmm. So it may be a beneficial treatment for you to discuss with your doctor if you are subject to any of these illnesses. And not every doctor does this, so you'd have to find a doctor who has on their website that they provide peptide therapy. So. And, and it's not a common prescription that you can go to CVC, CVS or, or Walgreens uh, or in, any other big pharmacies. You have to get it from a compounding pharmacy through your doctor's office, and then it's either the, it has to be refrigerated, and it's either a subcutaneous shot or a nasal spray. Right, and it's very important to go to a doctor who knows what they're doing. In, yeah, well, who knows their pharmacy. So we've gone yeah. through a couple different pharmacies, uh -huh. and I mean, one of them didn't send it fast enough, and and one, you know, so we finally found the pharmacy that we love, and so it's South Lake Pharmacy from Florida, and they send send it. They, it gets there on time. We we send the script, and the patient pays us. We pay the pharmacy. So basically. And we pay the shipping fee. They pay the shipping fee. So we usually suggest they get two to three months' worth. And it so comes in a, a refrigerated packaging. Well, if it is already reconstituted. So okay. if it's a powder, if it's already a liquid, then it has to come in a refrigerated kind of package. If it's still the powder... Heat doesn't bother it until you reconstitute it. So right. then when you, they send you a, a vial of bacteriostatic water, you have to draw up how many cc's, they tell you, and put it into the vial. The vial fills up, and you kind of gently shake it, draw up what you need, and then put it in the refrigerator. So they send two vials. One mm -hmm. just has powder in the bottom mm -hmm. of it. The other has this bacterias, what? Water. Bacteria static water, static which just water. means it's got something in it so you don't get bacteria growing or or um, fungus growing in the water. Mm -hmm. You don't want to contaminate what you're putting in because the powder is sterile. So it's been ster gamma sterilized. It's like you used to put this distilled water in your batteries to keep them charged in you your used car. used to. That was a yeah. long, oh, a long, yeah. I'm old. A long time ago. I'm old, remember? Uh, I yeah. remember doing that, actually. Yeah. I hate to admit but, that. But it's a similar process. Mm -hmm. You use a syringe to pull mm -hmm. it out and, and mm -hmm. 
constitute the, the liquid out of the powder. Right. And then you have to refrigerate that one. Mm -hmm. So what I usually do is, since I have to do this, is I usually fill up five small syringes and either leave them in the refrigerator. I got a $29 little refrigerator I put in my bathroom and then just put those in my bathroom and use them every night. Now, the, the, um, many of the peptides you take every night or you take twice a week, the, the growth hormone stimulator, you can only take five days a week. Then you're off for two days to let your, your pituitary down-regulate and, mm. and get normal again so it's not overstimulated. So I, if you just take it every night, then within six months, it's not going to work at all. Mm -hmm. So your, your, your body adjusts to it. Yeah. And so then you don't, you don't get the benefit. So that's what we do five days on, two days off for, for growth hormone. Now, there's other dosing schedules for these other peptides. Like um, I'm going to go to the thymus and beta mm -hmm. four. Okay. That's another peptide produced in the thymus that we were talking about before, but it does something completely different than the thymus and uh, alpha one. It is, it is actually a stimulator for healing. So when you, when we're young, we heal really fast. You know, we, we go through surgery. It's no big deal. You, you know, everything's working. So then as we get older, you know, you get knee surgery and it takes you forever to heal or you have some kind of other surgery. I had one patient that couldn't heal her bone um, and I didn't have this then. I didn't know about it then. I would have, I keep thinking, I would have treated her with this, <laughs> you know, or, or this other patient I would have treated with this because I, I just didn't have this information and, or an ability to get it. So this is something for post-surgical healing, but it's also some, some if you've had a, an illness, even COVID, and you have all these terrible, terrible symptoms that are lingering on, this would help you heal from that, help, help you get back to normal. Okay. C-Max is how you pronounce that. Thank you. It's not semen, it's C-Max. C-Max is, um, it's a peptide that helps you think. So if all you have is a memory issue, you're, 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 more, all of your stuff is more replaced. More than the normal thinking of as you get older, you can't remember the word you were looking for mm -hmm. or you, some, an actor's name in a movie or something like that. We're not talking about I, that kind of memory restoration. I did restoration. that when I was young. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to actually pay attention to who, which actor's in the movie. Yeah. Um, but if you have, um, if you had head injuries, you have degenerative diseases like ALS, this helps you think while you're get going through treatment and it keeps your brain from degenerating along with everything else. However, it does work for what you said. It works for recall. Really? Yeah. Huh. So it may, works. May, I'll need to remember that. <laughs> yeah. Write it down. So, <laughs> so it works for recall. It also works for, you know, as we get older, we don't pay attention as well. It helps mm -hmm. you pay attention so that you then remember things. Sometimes we just kind of go, nah. <laughs> and this yeah. helps you come back. But it's a nasal spray. It's less expensive than the shots. And it comes in a little bottle for a month, and then you spray it into each nostril every day. And it works. So. And then there's one more that you use at your office called mm -hmm. C-Lank. Mm-hmm. That's an anxiety treatment. Mm -hmm. And it's not controlled, and it doesn't have, it's not addictive, and... But it, it's a nasal spray that causes your brain to feel less anxious. Mm -hmm. So uh, oftentimes we use something called endodrin to decrease cortisol because some people have cortisol spikes whenever they get upset. But this actually stops you from getting upset. So we try the endodrin first, and then this is, this is the next step. Okay. Um, but it is a daily or twice daily nasal spray. And you feel calmer. And so it's easier to so negotiate you use life. It when you know that you're getting anxious, if somebody says, Some hey, people have anxiety daily. And yeah. so this would be a daily treatment instead of using Xanax or something that makes you sleepier or something that's addictive. Right. This would be helpful for those patients. It's also for patients who have episodic anxiety attacks. Like mm -hmm. if something happens and you know that if you have, like if you're stranded at the airport and nobody's picking you up and you can't get a cab, that causes anxiety. So, so if you know you're going to be in stressful situations That's what like I was that, to, then you can yeah. preempt them by using this that day. All right. So this whole concept of peptides is a growing one in medicine. And as I said, there are, there are thousands of peptide chains in the body. They haven't identified more than about 150 of them with a name. And they're learning more and more about what each of them do. 
and they don't have side effects. If, if you take a prescription and you, your body can't use it, it doesn't harm you. If you take a prescription and your body can use it, it helps you, doesn't harm you. So be aware and talk to your physician about their awareness regarding peptides. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.